Welcome back. I am Rowan, and this is part two of my very hard, hardcore, all challenges walkthrough. In today's episode, I will be getting in touch with my Norse heritage and pillaging, plundering, and looting Good Springs. Yar! And why, you might ask, are we despoiling the fair village of Good Springs after they went and saved our lives? Well, because we need every cap we can get to get the intelligence implant before level 2. And since this goal is of the highest priority, well, let's get looting. And for those of you just tuning in now, the At a Loss for Words challenge is featured in these videos. And that challenge requires failing 100 speech checks. And that my friends, is going to be the driving motivation for everything we do here today. This episode has been brought to you by Melee. Melee. Fixing all your problems, well, forever. Sick and tired of those pesky birds getting you down? Winged devils flying away and giving you the bird? Try Melee today and show them who's boss. And remember kids, don't run with knives. I'm what you might call a professional. Oh, ow, my eye, my eye. Oh, okay, ow, ow, okay. Don't run with knives, ow, ow, ow. All right, in all seriousness, let me explain what we're doing here. So, I'm heading up to Good Springs Cemetery here since that's where Victor is going. I'm gonna go and quickly loot the cemetery and yeah there were a few of you who watched my first video that were concerned about my stat placement I would like to reassure you folks again that by the end of this episode we'll be respecking our character and picking the proper stats make sure you don't miss these distinctive cigarette butts there's seven of them by the grave and three by this tree. Now be careful, they do like to fall through the ground and get lost. Um, and then make sure you come over here and get the snow globe for Good Springs. That's going to come in handy down the road. All these graves here, we're not going to be able to loot right now, but we'll come back in next episode. Well, looky there, the slow poke finally made it. Well, here comes Victor now. Let's talk to him. Hey, Tin Man, over here. Hey, guy you pulled out of the grave? Hey, remember me? Victor, hey. Howdy, partner. Might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? I know, I know. They call me a handsome devil. Don't mention it. I'm always ready to lend a helping hand to a stranger in need. I was out for a stroll that night when I heard the commotion up the old bone orchard. Saw what looked like a bunch of bad eggs, so I laid low. Once they'd run off, I dug you up to see if you were still kicking. Turns out you were, so I hauled you off to the dock right quick. Join me, Victor. Together, we can I'm rule this world. Son. Robco Security Model 2060B. If you ever see any of my brothers, tell them Victor says howdy. Happy trails! Well, fine then, Victor. I'm gonna go rule this world on my own. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. So while we're wandering around, I'd like to touch on character creation. And by the end of this episode, I will be redoing my character stats. Because once you leave Good Springs, you can completely reselect your character. Make sure you get this hidden BB gun over here. It's hidden right behind these barrels against this wall. Character creation is a very highly debated topic. Everyone's got their own two cents on the proper way to spec your character, the proper perks to get. Um, it's all really just opinionated. Uh, it's going to depend on your play style, what you enjoy. So there's really no right or wrong way to build your character. Oh, there's Victor again. Uh, let's talk to him quickly, because he's going to have some new things to say. Howdy, partner. 
Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town might be able to help you out with that. It will hunt a wascally wabbit. I moseyed into town, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Before that, I... Um, I can't quite seem to recall. Odd. Anyway, it's a right peaceful town, and I reckon it's as fine a place to settle as any. Yeah, maybe we should settle down, <laughs> give up the adventuring life. Maybe start a family. Nah. So let me talk about a highly debated topic on the usefulness of charisma. Uh, a lot of people seem to agree that charisma isn't a very good stat. But I've also seen some very compelling argument that it's not as bad as it was on Fallout 3. Because charisma affects your companion's nerve now. In layman's terms, what that means is that for every point of charisma you have, your companions get a 5% bonus to damage dealt and a 5% increase to their damage threshold or better put, a 5% increase to their armor. So for this playthrough, to explain I'm actually I will be putting my charisma at a one and here's the reason for that Howdy. now the increase to companions is very powerful don't get me wrong but it's more of a powerful thing early game when you're more reliant on your companions late game you're going to be the primary powerhouse in dealing the damage and being able to soak a lot of damage. Your companions are gonna be secondary. And besides, one charisma or 10 charisma, your companions are gonna die pretty darn fast when you start fighting Kazdors and Deathclaws on a regular basis. Believe me. Just to interrupt my uh, charisma topic briefly here, I wanna explain that we are not going to be picking up any Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Caps. Those trigger Malcolm Holmes spawning, and we do not want to trigger him until later. So don't take that cap right there. This is going to be very important that we trigger him when we're ready. There's a little hidden stockpile of pre-war money right behind this cabinet here. So make sure not to miss that. Okay, getting back to my charisma topic. Another important point with that is that even with setting our charisma initially to a 1, we can still max out our charisma skill at 10 when we need to through a combination of party time mentats, which give plus 5 charisma, and alcohol items such as moonshine, which gives plus 2 charisma, combined with any other alcohol items such as beer, for an additional plus one charisma or with a hundred survival skill all alcohol gives plus three charisma so you could just combine party time mentats with a beer to get a full 10 charisma and of course the reason i'm saying you can get a full 10 with only a plus eight bonus from items is because we will have the charisma implant so our base charisma will be a two so next i'm going to talk about Perception. Perception is another argued stat. Now, honestly, I think perception is one of the least useful stats in the game because EDE, his natural companion bonus is like having a maxed out perception score. So, EDE is one of the best companions to have. You can either have EDE or Rex. Now, I really do like Rex, but after Lonesome Road came out, they improved EDE even more. So EDE is hands down the best non-human companion to have. And you can have one non-human companion and one human companion for a total of two companions. And because of that reason, I'm going to be setting my perception at the initial five and here's why one of arguably the best perks in the game is better criticals 
it gives a 50% more damage on a critical hit. And I honestly, I haven't seen any builds that don't use that perk. So I think it's one of the few things that the Fallout community is in agreement on. That it is basically a standby perk for pretty much any build. The requirements for the better criticals perk are a uh, 6 perception and reaching level 16. So because of this, we will be setting our perception at a 5 initially, and then we will be improving it to a 6 through the use of an implant. And we make, need to make sure we get the implant before we reach level 16. And for those of you who really like Perception, feel free to put it at whatever you'd like. As I've said before, everything is opinion-based, and it's what you enjoy doing. Next, we're going to loot Victor's house here, and we're going to establish this as our new base of operations. If you're ever concerned about what's safe storage, ammunition boxes, medical kits, safes, Nuka-Cola vending machines and Sunset Sarsaparilla vending machines are always safe storage. What I like to do is use one of these ammunition boxes for all my weapons and ammunition. And then I use the other ammunition box for all of my aid items. Be careful about storing weapons and ammunition and aid items around... NPCs because they like to steal them so generally pick a storage area that doesn't have a lot of NPC traffic I always like trying to store all my excess gear and traveling as light as possible that way I'm able to loot more items face palm well I had to cut out uh, large section there because in my incompetence I accidentally hit the take all button had to redo putting everything away uh, had everything almost put back and went to close the box and hit take all again so I finally managed to do this properly and I decided to spare you fine folks the embarrassment of having to watch me do that multiple times. So anyway, getting back to my earlier topic of stats, I would like to talk about endurance next. I will be setting my endurance at a 9, and that is to get every implant. You need a 9 endurance if you'd like to get all of them. Now, I've seen some argument saying set it at a 7 instead and don't get the charisma implant and don't get the monocyte breeder implant which gives you a very very low health regen now although the monocyte breeder uh restores only a very minimal amount of health it is still in my opinion very beneficial and I take the Radchild perk with my builds, which gives you health regen based on your radiation sickness level, and it stacks very well with that. As for the Charisma implant, it's like a buy one, get one free deal. You put an additional point into Endurance, and you get a free point of Charisma. I think that's a pretty darn good deal. So, that's the way I like to go. In this house right here, make sure you get the skill book that's in here. It permanently ups your sneak skill. Now, we won't be using it right away. We're going to be saving it until we have the comprehension perk, which will let us get more bang for our buck when we use it. And also in this house is another star cap. We're going to want to leave that alone for now. Again, we'll come back and get it later. No worries. All right, and to get back to my topic of stats, um, we're going to be setting our intelligence at a 6 to start with. Now, 
there's a lot of argument about intelligence. Yes, you can actually start off with it at a three, get the implant before level two to bring it to a four, and then get comprehension and educated. Howdy. But what I'm actually going to do is there's a perk called the Voracious Reader perk. And I really, really like this perk. It lets us craft skill magazines. And here's the reason why that's really good. We can craft true police stories, which give you a plus 10 crit. Now, that's like having 10 points of bonus luck. Just let that sink in. 10 extra points of luck for putting our intelligence at a 6 to start with. And then getting the implant to bring it to a 7. All right, class, who knew this 5.56 millimeter ammo was there? Show of hands. All right, you there in the back. Well, good for you. Give yourself a pat on the back. All right, quick question for you all. Am I the only one who played this game for years before I knew about these Mojave Express drop boxes? Nowhere. Did it say in-game anything about those drop boxes being used for anything? It wasn't until I was randomly searching things and accidentally clicked on it that I finally figured out what it was for. Jeez. Anyway, before I rudely interrupted myself, I was talking about the Voracious Reader perk, which is also extremely useful because we're gonna be keeping our level low, and that means we're gonna need all the help hey. with skill checks that we Howdy. can get. What can Easy Pete do for you? Who attacked me, and why? The one in the fancy suit seemed to be calling the shots. That's as much as I know. Other folks in town might know more. Word of advice, though, if you ever catch up with him, watch out. The man's got cold eyes like a snake. Can't be trusted, I'd say. I wish I had a cool name like Easy Was a Pete. prospector until I decided to settle here to get away from the NCR. Now, we'll just take it easy and help out with the Brahmin and Bighorners. Silver and gold. Nah, nah. Means I poked through old buildings looking for working tech and such. Some folks just call it salvaging, but never liked the term. The way I see it, salvage means it's broken, near worthless. Me, I look for the good stuff. Guns, chems, spare parts. Good money in it. You gives me loots? Nope. Had a pretty good claim once, way out east by the river. But got run off by raiders. Eventually got too old to keep going out. Why you no like NCR? Don't get me wrong. The NCR's got a lot of decent folk in it. It's just that they make you part of them whether you like it or not. Towns like Good Springs and Prim don't stay independent for long. Not if you've got something the NCR wants. Still, the NCR keeps the Legion away. Legion? Bunch They're of pansies slavers, and leather skirts. Led by a guy named Caesar. Or Kaisar. Not sure how you're supposed to say it. A couple of years ago, they tried to take over Hoover Dam. But the NCR beat them back. The NCR didn't or couldn't finish the job, though. The Legion's got its strength back and is getting ready for another round at the dam. My money's still on the NCR winning, but you never know. We've been hearing stories about Legionaries on the Nevada side of the river, so keep a gun handy. You don't want to get caught by them. Why name a dam after a vacuum cleaner? The dam cleaner. powers a lot of New Vegas. And then there's all that clean water lying in Lake Mead, too. Anybody who owns the dam owns the territory. Wonder what Bighorner tastes like. Meat and hide, mostly. Can't put a pack on them. They just lay down until you take it off. Can find a bunch of wild ones high up in the hills, but gotta be careful around them. They can put up a decent fight if cornered. So, what do you know about Tin Man? The machine? Harmless. No matter what Trudy says. She thinks it's hiding something, but I think it's just a broken down relic with no place to be. Well, see you around, Gramps. Keep your gun handy if you go poking around some of the abandoned places around here, like the schoolhouse. 
critters move in there sometimes. Oh, no worries. I'll be sure to avoid such a dangerous place. Whoa, easy there, girl. Cheyenne, stay. Don't worry. She won't bite unless I tell her to. Make sure not to talk to Sunny Smiles about teaching us to survive in the desert. Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is a town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear. But I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. I like money, money, money. Not in good springs, no. But if you're up for a little scavenging, there's always the schoolhouse. Most of what's in there is junk, but there's this old safe that even Easy Pete wasn't able to crack with dynamite. If you want to take a shot at it, take these. Oh, baby, free stuff. But the lock's too much for you to handle. Reading through the magazine might give you the edge you need. You'll need those to pick the lock. Be careful, though. Put too much pressure on them, and they'll snap. I'm always careful. Snap! Always happy uh, to help someone down I on their luck. have some more? I hunt geckos, mostly. The meat's pretty good, and I can always find a buyer for the hides. I also help keep the town clear of rad scorpions and coyotes. Not many people live in good springs, so wildlife is always creeping in. So oh, where else can I go to steal? Sure. I mean, what do you shop know? for supplies. Southeast of here is Prim. Can't miss it. Since it has the giant old roller coaster right in the middle of town. The NCR's got an outpost there. If you follow the road north, you'll eventually hit Sloan and Quarry Junction. They mine rocks or something, but I heard they got troubles lately. I wouldn't head that direction if I were you, though. Got critters up there that don't take kindly to getting shot. Um, then let's not the go The New there. California Republic. Bunch of settlers and soldiers coming in from the west, fixing on making Nevada their own. They can be right pushy, but the roads are safer because of them, so I tend to let it go. Not that I got a choice. Ooh, tell me more. Well, the wildlife for one thing, rowdy locals for another. They're protecting their own. Just happens to help us. They've been holding off this other group from the east, too. Who's afraid of the Big Bad Legion? Got a funny big name. Bad Legion. Call themselves big bad Caesar's Legion. Legion. Never seen them in these parts, so I couldn't tell you much. I hear rumors, that's about it. Supposedly, they keep slaves and they got some real nasty ways of killing folks. But maybe that's just something folks in the NCR cooked up to make themselves seem more useful here. Less uninvited. So, uh, tell me what creatures Around I should avoid? Here, mostly coyotes and geckos. The coyotes are pretty dangerous in large packs, but otherwise they're nothing to really worry about. The geckos aren't too tough, but they've got a nasty bite. I've heard about bigger, nastier versions out in the wasteland, but I've never seen them. Stick to the roads when you can, and steer clear of the hills north of Good Springs. The critters up there are big and poisonous. Sounds like fun! If you Onward want to, to the hills north of Good Springs! Sure. Tally ho! If you want... All right. Uh, enough time. goofing around for me, I guess. Um, now, I found out something interesting. You can actually loot everything in the saloon, and nobody seems to care. At least at this point, anyway. Once Trudy is here, though, then they seem to get a little bit miffed if you take their stuff. But right now, apparently, we can just help ourselves to whatever, and nobody bats an eye. Like this guy. Watch this. I'm just going to take everything interesting over here, and he doesn't even care. Sweet. You know, you'd think he would at least be like, Hey, I don't think you're supposed to be back behind the bar. And I'd be like, oh, uh, I'm the new bartender. Don't mind days. me. No offense. To get back to my earlier topic of stats, I'd like to talk about strength. Strength is one of the most important stats in the game because it lets you carry more, which isn't super important, but it is convenient. Um, it also ups melee damage, which is very good, and it also ups melee skill, which eh, that's not really a big deal. But the most important thing about it is it determines your weapon sway. If you don't have enough strength to meet a weapon's strength requirement, you're going to be trying to aim it like you're a drunken toddler. And that's not good. And because of this, it's important to have enough strength to adequately use any weapons that you have an interest in using. 
if you're an energy weapon user, by the way, you don't need as high of strength because they all have a way lower requirement. Now, I like to have a balance of weapons, and so I'm going to make sure that my strength is a 5 to start off with, and that I can get 6 strength from the implant, and then there's a special perk from Old World Blues that gives you a permanent plus 2 strength for an 8 base strength. That should be plenty to use many of the weapons that we're going to be wanting to use. So, since we're going to be dropping our Charisma to a 1, I'm going to take those 4 points and I'm going to put them all in Agility. Because Agility is arguably the best stat in the game. It ups Action Points, it ups Reload Speed, it ups Draw Holster Speed. It's just really good. So, the meat and potatoes of this build is having your skills at the right levels to start with. Um, and for that... We're going to tag Lockpick, we're going to tag Repair, and we're going to tag either Melee or Unarmed. Now, I do prefer Unarmed over Melee, simply because if you get your Melee skill too high, there is a challenge for crippling Caesar's head with a throwing spear, and if your Melee is too high, you can potentially one-shot him, and you won't ever be able to get that challenge. And besides that, Spiked Knuckles are brutal early game. You can get a pair very early, and they're by far one of the most devastating weapons you can get early game. Now, I'm going to be taking Logan's Loophole for one of my traits, because being locked in at a max of level 30 is extremely helpful for maxing out your skills with skill books later. That and you can remove it in old world blues at the auto dock so we can use it right now to our advantage to get double duration from chems and then down the road we can remove it when we want to increase our character strength beyond that level and i also take wild wasteland because it adds content to the game and i know a lot of people don't like it but i really like some of the extra content that it adds and since you can remove it in old world blues i use it you until then and then get rid of it it's dangerous out here creepy tin man stalking me see that you do what you want i saved your life so i kind of feel responsible for you is all don't make me get a restraining order well sure you can friend but everyone needs a hand from time to time. Maybe you return the favor one day. I got my eye on I you, Victor. I wouldn't exactly like that, friend. And why do you think I'm in any trouble? Heck, I can smell trouble a mile away. Mmm, delicious <laughs> trouble. I like you, friend. Have I mentioned that? Very suspicious. I don't trust him. I can sense a something's a cooking. Hmm. Who is your master, robot? Who do you work for? Tell me, or face my wrath. Very resilient to interrogation. Fine, but this is not well, over. Well, of course not. We just wouldn't want anything to happen to you, is all. Be. So you were sent by somebody. Fine, you around, I'll let you live room. this time, robot. But next time, next time you will suffer my wrath. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of our journey, folks. Our time is again at its closure. Well, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something. And I hope you join me again for next episode. So, so long, farewell, Avidors, and goodbye.